what is up everybody hello and welcome back to the channel on today's video we are going to finally dive into a tutorial on how i make my thumbnails so typically you can use anything you want to make a thumbnail i mean practically anything if you want to look online and use some uh variations of that we have canva we have picmonkey there's so many other you know choices out there that you can use i just use photo escape x it's just me it's sort of like photoshop but a little bit more easier and fun in my opinion to use now typically what i would do if it's we're going to relate this to a rumored far-fetched uh you know property that would never ever come to halloween horror nights and that's what i'm going to do it based upon the thumbnail uh, for today's video now typically if it's involving let's just say i don't know we'll just say a chucky house for instance i would look a lot of chucky images i would use google images and that's how i search for a lot of different things um, you would look for maybe the logo some of the color designs a lot of things that just sort of get your creative brain working and flowing so you can know just sort of what you're going to do with the thumbnail what you want to do first of all is go to google images and search 1920 by 1080 youtube wallpaper thumbnail dimensions pretty much you'll just see it pop up um, and just get a standard one if you want to just sort of like i did and what you want to do is go to your editor which is up here you have editor and cutout which are the ones i spend the most time in to make thumbnails so go to your editor and under adjustments you should see it say color fill now you can do this and you can select your color. Typically, I usually work with a black, uh, straight black um, background just to uh, articulate everything. You're gonna take the opacity all the way up, and then there you go. You save this as a blank sort of uh, thumbnail preset folder, whatever image. And then that way you can just sort of hop in and, you know, start. You want to keep saving that as a different file every time you do work on a new thumbnail. So that way you still have this to go upon and you can just kind of, you know, keep it very simple. So mine's just called uh, YouTube uh, thumbnail blank zero one. And then when I start doing images or setting stuff over this, wallpaper i will save it as whatever it is so like chucky halloween horror nights house you know if you look at this this is a typical sort of wallpaper that universal would put out for their announcement now if you go to halloween horror nights 29 on youtube you're gonna see like five or six videos just like this with the same thumbnail it's my theory that if you create something eye-catching, something different, it's going to pull in a viewer as opposed to seeing, you know, six videos with the same title and the same thumbnail. Um, typically, people are going to click on maybe the top one or two videos and that's it. So unless you're like first to the run and gun situation of putting up a video or unless you're universal, because obviously they would have the most views on the video first. Um, I would stay clear of using the standard wallpaper that uh, Universal provides. You can, however, manipulate it, manipulate it, manipulate it. Uh, use it to your advantage if you want to like take theirs and cut out certain things of it. I highly recommend you can do that as well. So um, that's what a blank dummy one uh, looks like. That's I created this myself. So um, this is probably what their standard one would look like. So what we do is we want to go to cut out. So typically I do everything in this formation. I do all the images, everything I'm going to use. And then I go to cut out and what cut out is, is essentially you're cutting out the image. So if I had a picture of this, so what you're seeing is the basically the poster. So what I want to do is just include the title and the face character here i have the magic eraser you have a lasso and you have a brush now brush is more like if you want to do finer details you can you know change the size of it so you can make it smaller big and typically if you want to just cut you know finer details you can do that and if you hit invert mask it's just going to be whatever i basically cut out now if i go back 
and I go to negative, it's going to basically do nothing on this image because it's already there. So if I do a cutout, let's say a cutout, we'll do something like this. And then I go to invert mask. It's going to be everything that's there that I cut out. So if I want to, you know, if I want to fill in the image, I go to negative and I can start filling it in. If I want to do it that way, that's just a different way. So if you want to do lasso, there's different ways you can do this. You can do just the regular way where you kind of draw around in the image and it's a little bit easier this way um, to do it. And then you go to invert mask and there's your image or you can do a close path. So if you want to do a non close, uh, so you can do this way and then you basically take this and you're going to just draw. So it keeps it just kind of more close path. So it's different ways you can do that. Um, my favorite is you go to magic eraser and you can typically, what you do is you just click on whatever you don't want you to erase. So like this, I would want to erase everything that is in the black portion. So I click on it and depending on what I like. So if I like a little more of the shadow in there, I can just change this tolerance. So you can change it after you've already done it. You can make it more, you can make it less and you can sort of just see how much of a fine detail you want. So if I want a little bit of that and it just erased everything on the outskirts, then you can do that as well. Um, it's all about what your preference is. And there is sort of something else I wanted to do. So if I go back to lasso, let's say, and I say, oh, that's good. Um, all right. And what you typically if you lasso something or magic erase something and you want to go over to your brush and you want to just get it nice and clean as best as you can sometimes when you do it you'll have spec i call them spectacles or just sort of traces in there and when you go to put this over your wallpaper um your blank wallpaper you're going to kind of notice the spectacle sort of showing up sometimes so I just like to go in and always clean up the image as best as I can to just make sure it's nice and neat. So we'll do something like this. This is good. We'll, we'll leave that just like that and see what, what I was talking about with the spectacles. You can just sort of clean this up a little bit more. Um, there we go. And that looks good. I would just save this. Okay, so now once that is done and you did all your cutouts, you got everything sort of cut out, your logo, your image, whatever you're gonna be using, all the good stuff. So now the fun stuff is now basically the fun part. You can do all sorts of coloring and creating. So we have lights, you can do different lighting. If you want to, you have light leaks. Um, it's just a variety of whatever you wanna do. You have lens flare, you have different things, you have bokehs, you have lights, which is kind of cool if you like put this somewhere, you do like a red background, there's a variety of things you can do. So you can go over here, you can click film, and it sort of puts this sort of a film look over whatever the color is. I would typically save that for the last option of whatever you do. Um, you can go to old photos and put sort of this neat uh, look to it if you want to. Um, that's sort of just a cool design if you want to do something like that. Like I said, it's sort of endless of what you can do. So I go to, first thing I go to is insert. You go to image. And then from there, you can sort of just grab and pick whatever you have and you want to put over the image. So like for me, I would probably put some cartoon flames in here. Uh, we can hit this button, which duplicates it to, to make another one. And I can do just like that. I can put it behind the other one so it wouldn't be noticeable. And there we go. That's sort of cool. If I want to, you know, put these down a little bit. And what's going to help you a lot is the opacity. So if you dumb this down a little bit you can see 
where your exact line is and where you want to stick the flame. So if you don't want them, you know, sticking too far out, you can do it like that. Um, click on this, drag up the opacity, and then we will dive back into grabbing some of our it also helps if you leave everything in sort of one standard folder. It's going to help you out in the long run instead of having to, you know, look for certain things or, you know, certain uh, images all over. You can drag this to be big and something like this. I always tend to, for everything I typically put, I put a drop shadow just to make it pop a little bit more. There is, there we go. Now that is one simple design I created. It's just a blank standard one. We got the flames, big letters. You have to also remember when you make the thumbnail that you have to shrink it down. So I'm just basically doing on the uh, trackpad that I have. I'm just sort of dropping it down and you'll see sort of how the image is going to look. Also, I have to remember that. So when you look on YouTube for thumbnails or videos, um, the thumbnail is really small. We tend to look at thumbnails when they're like full size. So you have to think to make everything a little bit bigger and eye catching and popping. So that is just one sort of variation of what you can do. Uh, if I wanted to, I can sort of uh, take this one, drop this out. There's another variation on the thumbnail. Uh, there's there's another one that would be eye catching, eye popping. And then once you save this, you want to also save it. You can do a save project. You can do save as um, save project is good if you want to just sort of go back in and retouch it. That's how you do that. So we're going to put a uh, house of a thousand HHN twenty nine thumbnail 01 and here we go so once you already have it saved you can do all the little stuff i showed you so you can go back over you can put um if you want to change some of the vignetting if you want to like uh, go over here you can put a light if you want to brightness if you wanted to so you can do stuff like that you can go to film go to the film and this will change the outlook if you want to change some of the color settings of it you have dual tone which is not typically used too often unless you want something to be sort of black and white you have an overlay um, all these things give it basically different looks and when you click on one you can change different things to it you can do overlay you can do a screen darkness normal all these different settings and then you have a just amount so you can put it a certain amount if you wanted to you also have a compare button so you can click it hold down the button and you can see what it looked like before and after i think that looks a whole lot better with it on and then there you go and that is it that is how i create a thumbnail from start to finish let me know if i kind of did that a little too fast or if there's any other questions you might have how to use the program or anything that I didn't quite go over. Um, leave it down in the comment section and I'll make a part two to answer any questions I get. Uh, let me know if you guys like this sort of behind the scenes of how I do things involving the channel and how I do it involving the creation of things on the channel. Uh, let me know if you like that and I'll try to create more videos uh, about that in the future. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for the likes, the subscriptions, and um, I'll catch you guys on another video very, very soon. Peace out.